Hello and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about ASP.NET Core API. How to do a partial update using the patch verb. Now if you're familiar with API integration, you'll be familiar with the CRUD operations and the relevant HTTP verbs that they use. However, if you're not familiar, or you just want a refresher, then we're going to talk through that. So to start off with, you've got your read method, and what that basically does is it uses the get verb and reads the record in. You've got your create method, which basically uses the post verb and creates the record. Then you've got your update method, and that's slightly different where you can choose between two verbs. You can either use the put verb, which does a full update, or you can use the patch verb, which does a partial update. And finally, you can use the delete verb to call your delete method. Now it's the update methods that we're going to concentrate on today and whether to do a partial update or a full update. Now picture this scenario. You work in a video game store. The title of a computer game has been officially released and you want to update it onto the system. You load up the record, but you want to spend 20 minutes searching the internet just to make sure it's the correct title. However, whilst you're doing that, your co-worker has a spreadsheet of all the release dates of particular games, including your game. So they go ahead, import the spreadsheet into the system. Now you come back 20 minutes later, you update the official title, update it. What do you think will happen though if you do a full update? Well, because you didn't refresh the record, that means that the release date would have been the old release date before the spreadsheet was uploaded. What that basically means is that you're going to override the release date if you do a full update. The other option is to do a partial update where you only update the fields that you've changed. So that's what you can do with a HTTP patch verb. You can do that, just do a partial update. Um, you can also do it in ASP.NET Core API as well. And we're going to run through a demonstration with you now. So now I've created an ASP.NET Core MVC API to demonstrate how to use the patch method. Before that, you need to include a couple of NuGet references. You need to include the Microsoft.ASP.NETCore.json patch, and you also need to include the Microsoft ASP.NET Core MVC Newton JSON. We also need to make a change to our startup class. Inside configure services, you should already have the add controllers method. In addition, you need to add the Newton JSON to that as well. Now for our example, we've created a video game class. And what the video game class will do is it will store information about the video games. So it will be information like the ID, the title, the publisher, and the release date. And we've also created a video game controller as well, which routes to API forward slash video hyphen game. Now we've created a list property, which will store all the information about the video games. When the controller is constructed, it will create a new instance of the video games and store all the information about the relevant video games. Now we've created a patch method. And what we've done is we're using the HTTP patch attribute and passing in an ID. This corresponds to the parameter of ID here. We've also got an additional parameter, which is basically a JSON patch document, which passes in the actual entity, in this instance, video game, as the generic. Do remember to include the from body, otherwise it will not work. So what we're doing here is that we're doing a check against the video games property to see if the ID that we're passing in actually exists. If it doesn't exist, we return a not found. However, if it does exist, then we apply our information from our patch entity into our entity, and then we're going to return that entity. So to demonstrate that this actually works, we're going to use Postman. So we're going to run the application. So now we're going to test our API in Postman. Now, if you've not used Postman before, I suggest you download it at postman.com. 
is absolutely essential if you want to do API integration. Now what we're going to do to test this is we're going to select the relevant verb, which for this instance we want patch. We've also got the URL here, so you've got the uh, host alongside the endpoint, which is API forward slash video game forward slash two, where two is the ID of what we want to update. We also need to make sure that it's set to application JSON, the content type that is. So what we can do here is we want to update the title for ID of two. If we go back to our application, we can see that the title is Friday the 13th, the game. We want to update it just to Friday the 13th. So what we've done here is we've set the path to forward slash title, set the value to Friday the 13th, and the opt to replace. Let's see if it updates our entity. As you can see here, it has exactly done that. It's changed it to Friday the 13th. So what if we want to change two properties? Well, let's go ahead and do that. Let's change the release date. Let's change it to the 1st of April, 2020. And let's see what happens. As you can see there, it's updated the title and the release date. But more importantly, it hasn't overridden the publisher. The publisher is still Gun Media. So doing a partial update reduces the risk of overwriting data, but it doesn't completely eliminate it because you could be updating a field that's already been updated through a different system. So to sort that out, you'd probably need to put some sort of lock in on a record system where basically only one person can update a record at one time. Now for more articles, visit roundthecode.com. Subscribe to my YouTube channel at roundthecode.com forward slash YouTube and follow me on Twitter. It's at roundthecode and I will see you on the next video.